So if you've ever seen a five-star chef or similar professional, you'll notice that they have a very small subset of tools that they use fairly often. For us in Java, that would be operators. They're the symbols that actually perform operations behind the scenes. You may be familiar with some of these operators already. Simple math ones. In Java, we can add, we can subtract, uh, we can multiply, and we can even divide. And we can use parentheticals to actually perform operations before others. So what else do we have at our disposal? Well, a very common thing that you often want to do is take a particular variable and just have it be equal to itself plus one more. This happens so often that there's actually an operator for it, the increment operator. Sure enough, you can also decrement by taking something and having it basically be equal to itself minus one. We can even do it for multiplication. Let's say we wanted our number to be equal to itself times seven. We can also express that with an operator that looks something like this that does the exact same thing. Let's say we wanted to write this number to the log. Um, let's say we wanted to write uh, my int. And just so we don't have to remember what's going on up here, let's just set it equal to 20. There's unary operators that allow us to actually change the value to be positive or negative. So for instance, if I want to do this, it will write to the log negative 20. Similarly, if I were to do this, a plus sign here is going to write positive 20 to the log. Those are the operators that allow us to change data. But another thing that we have to do really often is compare data. And for that we have comparison operators. So you're already familiar with this situation. In this particular if statement, I'm asking is 4 equal to the value of 4. Remember, it's two things to compare, not one. This is an assignment operator. This is a comparison operator. So what else can we do in terms of conditionals? Well, we can do all the simple ones, like we can say is 5 greater than 4. Uh, we can even say is 5 less than 4. Uh, we can say is 5 less than or equal, greater than or equal. We have all the different comparisons for just greater than, less than, and are these things equal. But on top of that, sometimes we really just want to know the opposite of is 5 equal to 4. In this case, we have the not symbol. Notice again that the not symbol is before the equal sign, and it just means is 5 not 4 in this particular case. We can also express this in terms of using the not operator right before the variable that we want to use. So let's say we have a boolean, um, and let's say it's um, a boolean for is this true, um, or actually let's call it in this case uh, is true. We'll set it to true. So if I were to run this particular piece of code, I would be asking uh, if is true. Um, so this would be asking if is true is equal to true. I could also ask is not true. And that would be asking to make sure that is true is actually set to false. When we're doing conditionals, sometimes we have these situations where we want to say, well, is 5 greater than 4? But I also want to check to see if another condition is also true or false. For that, we have two operators. We have the AND operator. So this would be 3 smaller than I don't know, 5. In this case, you're going to have a comparison where it's going to say, OK, is this condition true? And is this condition true? If both of these conditions happen to be true, then the entire thing evaluates to true. So I'm basically asking, if this and this are true, then give me a true statement. There's also a friend of the AND operator, which is the OR operator. The OR operator states, if this is true, OR this is true. So in this case, if we were to say, uh, is 5 equal to 4, OR is 3 less than 5, this would actually run code, because 3 is less than 5. So at least one of those things is true. Lastly, we can actually combine these operators in a large set. So we can say, if 5 is equal to 4, or 3 is less than 5, or 1 is equal to 1, or 2 is less than or uh, 0, 
and 4 is equal to 4, this would evaluate and say, OK, out of all of these guys that we have here, one of them is true. So that means that I have an OR operation and it works. And 4 is equal to 4. And it would just compartmentalize all of that and say, yes, that is a true statement. Go ahead and run the code in the if block. These are not all the operators. There's a couple more that I left out, and we'll be going over those later in the series, so that we can show you a context to really understand how they work.